And how did you get interested in drawing comics? Well, I always drew from when I was a small child, and my father um, kind of steered me into being an artist, really. So I went to art school not really knowing why I was going. And then I met uh, my future husband there, who was a, an aspiring cartoonist. And uh, when we got out of art school, we were kind of poor. In fact, we were very poor. <laughs> and so um, we had a friend who was involved in comic books, and he suggested I make up a page of samples and uh, take it around. And I did, knowing nothing about the business. And uh, I got a job at DC Comics. It was my first job. Who was that? Who, who? It was Murray Boltonoff. He came, I remember he came out in the hall and looked at it and said, well, we'll give you a four-pager to try you out, and that was it. What's, what was it? Do you remember? Yes, it was, uh, I think it was Shining Night. It was either a Shining Night or some mystery thing. And uh, it wasn't until later that I realized how difficult it is to get a job in comics, you know, especially, I suppose, if you're a woman. But, you know, I was just the luck of the blind, really. You didn't know any better. You yeah, just... that's right. <laughs> uh, what year was it? It was in 1952. And that was also a tough time in comics, wasn't it? I think it probably was, yeah. Although, to this day, I don't know very much about the business. You know, I would just take the scripts home and do them. I, I was really dreamwalking through the whole thing. So, and did you get a re regular feature out of that? Yes, then uh, I mean, they gave me a few fillers, and then they put me on Aquaman, which I did all during the 50s. How would you like that? I didn't like drawing very much. <laughs> because it was a lot of work or because you didn't like the character or because... It was hard. It's hard to draw. And I didn't really relate to it. I appreciate it much more now, looking back. And, and after seeing the response uh, when people come up and look at my drawings, you know, it makes me realize that I gave people some pleasure, you know, along the way. But at the time, it was just a way to make some money, just ground it out. Did you think it was like a stepping stone to something bigger and better? No, never. I never had any ambition. <laughs> <laughs> except to pay This the is going to be a very depressing except interview. Except to pay the mortgage. Yeah, right, except to pay the bill. <laughs> so after you did Aquaman for... Uh, I did it during the 50s, and then um, I think I quit when I had my baby. And uh, she was two years old, and I had to stop. You know, I just couldn't. She was clinging to my knee, you know, trying to get my attention. And I had all these deadlines. So I quit. And then um, shortly after that, George Cashdan called me up over at DC and asked me if I would just help them start this new idea that they had, which turned out to be Metamorpho. So I agreed to go back for four issues and then really quit. So that's what I did for seven years, then I quit. Four issues in seven years? No, no. <laughs> Four issues and then seven years. And then I spent seven years, you know, wheeling my daughter around to dancing school and things like that. The mom stuff. Yeah. Well, if you thought that Aquaman was hard to draw, what about Metamorpho? Well, see, Metamorpho was fun. I mean, I enjoyed doing that. It was hard, but it was funny, you know, and, and we just used to laugh, you know, when I'd go up there with the drawings and, and I'd get the script. We just laughed a lot over it, and it got more and more fun, really. Who was the writer? Bob Haney. Did you end up going into the office ever, or did you, you totally... I was always yeah. isolated, always. I never knew anybody in the business. You know, I've, I've met more people in the last two years than I ever knew in all those years. So it was sort of sad, you know. I, I felt, I mean, I had no connection to it. I was living in a vacuum, kind of. You never, like, talked to any other women artists and find out how they managed with their kids? What? Their there weren't any, you know, except for Marie. And I, and I kept hearing about Marie, you know, the, from the minute I got there, but I never met her. And so, you know, I wasn't very sociable. I spent most of my time, really, with my husband's friends, you know, with the New Yorker people rather than with the comic book people. So it was just a different world. So basically, I ended up drawing two characters over the course of about 20 years. Well, um, from 52 to 65, then I quit, and then I came back in the 70s. And uh, I, w I did a thing because, because Roy Thomas called me over at Marvel. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I should go back and draw again. You know? So they, I go up to Marvel, and he hands me this paragraph. And he says, now go home and draw the story. You know? And I had never worked that way before. 
So I went home and I just floundered my way through this story, you know. I, I had no idea what I was doing. And that was my only thing I did for Marvel. What was it? It was a thing called The Cat. I think I also did a Fantastic Four, too. I think I did two stories for them. But I was never destined to work for Stan Lee. <laughs> Too collaborative for you? It's just, I don't know, the chemistry was not right. I always felt at home at DC, but not at Marvel. So I went back to DC and, uh, and I started doing Plastic Man, which I enjoy. Oh, no, first I did Mysteries with Joe Orlando, which was great fun. Though That was really the most fun I had. And uh, then I did Freedom Fighters and then Super Friends. And I went on to Brenda Starr. How'd you like doing? How'd you like working with Joe Orlando? Oh, I loved it. Joe was wonderful. He was really one of the best, the, the best editor that I ever had. Do you think that's because he was an artist? I think it was, and I think it was because he was very interested in developing talent, and he cared about it, you know, and, and nobody, I'd never had any, any art criticism from any editor I'd ever had before, you know, but Joe, Joe stretched you, you know, he made you do better than you thought you could. I appreciated that. And he was fun, too. He encouraged you to meet any of the talent? <laughs> Himself, that is, you know. He was, you know, I mean, he was such a, such a rogue kind of a guy. He's quite a charmer. He, he really is. He's just a lot of fun. So that was, that was good. And I liked him. And he had a sense of humor, too. And I think he appreciated that in my work. And so we were a good combination. Okay. So when you first got in the business, did you ever look at any of your competition to see, you know, who, who was doing what? I didn't know anything. I didn't, I never looked at comic books. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why they were paying me for doing what I was doing. One day, um, one day I didn't have time to do some inking on a job and I, I was talking to Paul Levitz and he said, he said, you've got to do this. And I said, why? You can get anybody to do it. And he looked at me and he said, don't you know that you have a style? You know, it never occurred to me that I had a style, you know? So I was just like totally out of it. I mean, it really was like sleepwalking. Well, what got you to comic books? Why didn't you think about doing, well, obviously if your husband's a cartoonist, why didn't you think about doing cartoons? Uh, I think it was destiny. I was supposed to do it. Um, I tried doing some gags, you know, a few times. I wasn't suited for that. And besides, he was the gag cartoonist, you know? It would have been, uh, redundant. So I know obviously it's a lot of work to sit there and pencil and come up with something out of your imagination, but didn't you get a, a certain amount of satisfaction when you finally finished it, each of the stories? No. Never? <clears throat> Only when the paycheck came. Yeah, when it was finished and I had a day off. I, I mean, seriously, I did not enjoy doing the work. I mean, there may have been a couple of times that I did, you know, a couple of stories that I worked on, but basically it was a job, you know? you think about the fact that if you got someone to ink your work that it would take less time and it might be a little more enjoyable for them? Well, that was only when I was doing Brendan inking. I, did, I never inked, or I, I inked Aquaman, but most of the time I was just penciling, which, which is a lot easier. But, but I do such a tight pencil that uh, I might as well be inking it, you know? What got you to Brenda Starr? Dale Messick uh, was quitting and they wanted to replace her with a woman. And uh, I was it, you know. Marie and I were it, I suppose. And I think they were combing the brush for about a year. They, they finally found me, you know. So I did some samples and got the job. Do you like working on a strip? Was it better than working in comic books, doing the strip work? No. Actually, looking back now, I think working in comics was much more fun and more, more uh, challenging. I mean, first of all, you had a free format. Working on a strip is much more confining artistically, I think, because of the layout, the format. You're confined to three panels in a row, and on Sunday it's like an unchanging series of the same panels every Sunday. So you can't take all the liberties that you can when you're drawing comics. And the subject matter is quite different. I mean, going to Brenda Starr from doing, horror, you know, mysteries and things like that is quite a change. And unfortunately, what happens is you end up doing a lot of close-ups after a while because it's very dialogue-y. And um, I don't think that the writers that I had while I was doing Brenda were really 
had a handle on doing um, on writing for a strip, for a still scene, you know. They grew up on TV, and they were used to moving images. If you have a close-up, for instance, and the person is supposed to be saying one thing so that you can give that an expression to that one sentence, you know, but they would have a whole balloon full of seven different kinds of moods, you know, so I never knew. It makes it difficult to know what you're illustrating. That's just a crude example, but they didn't write graphically for graphics. Whereas the comic book writers knew their craft. They really knew how to visualize scenes. Do you think that was true from the time when you first got scripts from uh, writers when you were doing uh, Aquaman originally? Yes, they all knew. They all, they all thought visually. And that just makes a huge difference, uh, especially the mysteries. And Metamorpho, too, is very graphic, you know. I mean, the pictures just popped out. Was it difficult for you when you first started to kind of take a script and, and do the page layout so that you determine the pace. The no, I think I always had that, that instinct. I always had a sense of what should be a close-up and a long shot and that kind of thing, right from the beginning. That first page of samples I did that I took up to, uh, to DC, I found myself without realizing it, using, drawing on all of the, the, um, the wonderful symbolism that cartooning has developed over the years, you know, the pows and and zaps and things like that. I hadn't, you know, I'd never drawn for that before, but I must have soaked it up a lot when I was a child because I used to love reading comics then. And it just seemed like I knew what I was doing, you know? Is Very it, strange. It was easier to read them than it was to draw. Uh, yes, a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so instinctively, you knew what to do. I was a cartoonist. I'm a cartoonist, let's face it. Yeah, that's great. I went to art school, but I went to the Art Students League which is a fine art school, very you know, pretentious in that sense. And one day somebody came up to me and said, you should be a cartoonist. And I was so insulted. He was looking at the sketches I was doing, you know, but it was true. I always saw things in a kind of an exaggerated, stylized way. Were any of the people you went to school, there were people who got into the business that you ended up They all work? got into the New Yorker. There were about five fellows that we went to school with who ended up in the New Yorker. Interesting. Not that I don't know anybody who went into comics, though, from there. Did you consider it to be a worthwhile profession when you were working? No. I had the feeling. I remember when I first met my husband, he used to go make the rounds to the different magazines, and they called it the bread line when the cartoonists would come in on Wednesdays, you know, and line up to show their stuff. And I, f I had felt that way about cartooning, too. Although I came to admire the work that the New Yorker people did, but I always thought that what I was doing was a more of a lowly profession and invisible to a certain extent. What'd you tell people you did when they asked you? I, I would, they'd have to ask me. <laughs> I know, I feel very bad saying this, you know, because I don't think I feel that way about it now, but I did all the, all those years I was working there. You know, I'm interested in coming back into the business at this point. Yeah, um, yeah I know. The comparison I was thinking about, uh, I, I remember going to a screening of um, The Adventures of Robin Hood in Los Angeles. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna, I was the recent one, business. you mean the recent one? Or? No, 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 oh. Errol Flynn. Oh, Errol Flynn, Flynn. yeah, and sure. I went there, I was sitting there, and I was, I was at the museum, and I used to be in, in film archive programs. And I leave it to have one was sitting two rows behind us. I was screening for about 10, 15 people. And, and the, the thing was over, and she said, you know, I really hated doing those pictures at the time because Errol Flynn was such a jerk. <laughs> she, said, but the, she, she said, but you know, it was a pretty good film. Yeah, it was 1972. Yeah. Now, the picture was made in 1938. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you ever get, to this, get the sense where you kind of look at the work and you say, you know, I did a pretty good job there. This is, wasn't so bad. I feel that way about the mysteries and about uh, some of the, I think I did very good drawing on Super Friends. I mean, it, be, it began to get competent then. The drawing I did for Metamorpho had raw energy, which I really appreciate now. And, and the mysteries were very inventive and, and the drawing was really good, I thought. I look at my Aquaman stuff and it just seems so stilted. I just starting really then. But it had a certain simple charm to it. Do you think that it was more fun and more interesting for you to do a variety of books, a variety of stories like the mystery stories as opposed to continuing? Yes, yeah. I always, well, as a matter of fact, when they took me off the mysteries and put me back on superheroes, I knew my time was running out. You know, it just really, I just didn't like doing that. 
because they were so one-dimensional. Except for Plastic Man was fun. That was really a fun strip to do. And there was a lot of silly satire in it, and the characters were interesting to exaggerate. I really enjoyed that strip, too. But most humor strips work on two different levels. They work on a child's level, and you can, and you can actually make them work for an adult or a young adult audience. So it probably makes it more interesting for the artist as well. I guess so. I guess so. You mean strips? You mean newspaper strips no, or what? characters like pa Plastic Man, yeah. something that's yeah, you know, humor yeah. strips. I mean, it could be both daily strips or uh, newspaper strips or comic books. Yeah, that's well. true. He was he did all those funny things, but then there was also the satire too. So it was yeah, it was a nice thing. And those writers, like I said, they they visualized. You know, the, you know, it's funny. The writer that I enjoyed working with most was a woman who has ended up doing pornographic writing or something. Her name was Maxine Fabe. If I'm wrong. You know, I apologize, but that's what I heard she ended up doing. But her writing, I just thought she was such fun to, to, you know, to illustrate her stuff. It just clicked in my mind. You know, the pictures just popped out for me when I did one of her scripts. So she's still not writing comic books? I think, no, she disappeared. When I started to do Brenda, um, they were looking for a writer, and part of it was my assignment to try to find one. And I thought about her, you know, and then I heard she was doing pornographic stuff, and so I thought, well, but she disappeared. If you had anything to do over today, based on the business that you know of or the things that you've seen, what would you do? Would there be people that you'd like to get in contact with or strips that you would have liked to have taken a shot at doing or genres that you haven't worked in within the comic book medium that you'd like to do? I don't think so. If I had to go back, I'd probably want to do something that was exaggerated something that was bizarre and exaggerated, but but not in, in the sense of something grotesque, you know, the way so much cartooning is today. But it's, I guess, I, I guess broad caricature is what appeals to me. Did it ever occur to you that there weren't that many other women working in the business? Oh, I always knew that. Yeah, I always knew that. And I always, I had an, a daily identity crisis. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, sometimes I'd sit there and I'd be drawing these people smashing each other in the face, you know, and doing all this stuff. And I thought, what on earth am I doing here, you know? But I remember one time saying to some friends of mine, you know, we were speculating about why there weren't many women, in, any women in cartooning. And, and I said, well, I think it's because women aren't violent. And they both laughed at me. And this was way back in the 60s, you know. I have to acknowledge that I have violence in me. This is an outlet. This this was an outlet for me, you know. I don't know if I'm unusual or if I'm just more aware of that in myself, you know. I know that when I see most women's drawing, they want to draw very sweet things, you know. And I don't think that they really can draw the kind of things that I've been drawing. So it's a kind of a problematic area for me. I have to wonder, you know. Maybe you're just more talented. Well, I don't know. I know that I have the ability to feel, when I'm drawing a male figure, to feel that, and when I'm drawing a female figure, to feel that. I can, I can move in and out of those two um, identities. I notice that with many men who draw women, they look like men. They've got that kind of muscle-bound look. They can't switch over. but. I think I can do that. Still going to do shows? Oh yeah, I love them. They're they're <laughs> they're really a lot of fun. You get to meet all the people that you never. Yeah, never to see I know. Anymore. It's really it's a nice thing, and it's nice to meet the fans. I was so touched the the first time I came here it was the first show that I'd been to in twenty years, and and when I see these fans, you know, around thirty years old, thirty five years old, uh, who had read. Aquaman when they were kids, they'd come up and they'd look at my drawings and they, they all have this look on their face that is so sweet. You know, they, they get this little smile and you can just see that they're going back, you know, and it, it, that was a great pleasure for me to see them. You know, I began to realize that I'd given them something valuable, really. It wasn't just a job. Yeah, it wasn't just a job. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is you get more time to enjoy it because, you know, I assume you're your daughter's old enough now where you don't have to watch Yes, well, that's sort of. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, once you have more time to be able to enjoy things like that, you, you appreciate it more. Yeah, these are what you call the golden years, right? I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> things you want to add to the... Well, I just wanted to say that um, what interests me, looking back, I went to NYU to college when I was 50. I suddenly decided I wanted to go to college because I never had. I took courses in religion and psychology, and I ran into the Gnostic scripture by a very devious route. And I've become ex I just deeply absorbed in it since then. I realized that what I was doing in comics all the time was a kind of a, a pop version of, of this deeper, kind of a perennial um, wisdom. And the mythology, the symbolism is the same. It's similar. Superman, for instance, is a pop version of the hero savior who comes down from the light world to save humanity, you know, to exemplify. And a lot of these characters in comics are drawing on that kind of really basic material. I think that perhaps makes you interested in this subject, you know, that it has such a germinal quality because I think it is tapping unconsciously on something very basic, you know. And I think that uh, all the years I was sleepwalking through comics, I was sort of, I maybe I was going on a parallel route to where I eventually am now, you know. So it gives my me some sense of not having wasted all those years. That's great. <laughs>